of the suggestion I was addressing about the minus. Um, Yes, Mark and I asked about it. So. Oh, who? Oh, um, so the question is not that I'm curious. There's an update to the index, but you might still want to maybe this one is daily or weekly scrape it in the middle of all, so that if there's ever a problem, uh, we can fix it out. But I think it's true. Uh, this is something I or, or spend a lot of time uh, um, on because I was very interested, interested and we, have, uh, we had some phone, phone call, uh, mm -hmm. uh, long phone call. And I, I think um, uh, the build stat database is much better to, uh, to do... Uh, no, no, you don't. Uh, to do... Uh, to do uh, 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 software de development, I, 
I think it's much better because there is a, what I said um, some minutes ago. The, the database structure is uh, easy to access for, from a, a, an object model development. Uh, where, where, whereas, uh, Yo, yo. Oh. Yeah, please try and okay. tell us that you so, hear us. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, if, if, this is uh, my opinion, but I think if we want to store information in UDD, it's much more easier to, to fetch mm -hmm. them from a uh, build stat database and uh, push them in UDD. And this won't b break uh, the, the current mech mechanism where we have um, uh, four big um, update per day because uh, all the data wo will be uh, already in another database. And um, uh, so uh, I, I think the build stat is, not f is far from being perfect. But uh, this part, uh, in my opinion, is uh, is quite correct, and uh, I think you should at least take a look on it. I took a look last year, but I really don't remember it now by heart. It's been a long time. Um, If you want, we can have a look uh, together after just to see what can we can uh, can be done uh, on the code base. Uh, I don't like the current interface of um, BuildStat because it's uh, I don't li like it. It's poor uh, quality code and, uh, and so on. And I, and I love um, PET on this uh, on this side. And um, I think we are lucky because we, um, this both projects are strong in one side. And uh, I, f I think we have all uh, together to merge. Uh, uh, you were talking about the, the front yeah. of PET. The front of PET is very nice and very rich. There is a lot of information. Is, but is the problem is that in PET, there's a code the that does the, the, present, the presentation. It's just it's tiny in comparison. In, right. in fact, um, you could use it now if you wanted, huh? because it just has all the data when it's called. It has all the data in a big hash, and it just formats it. Yeah. It only does that. The data is already do, uh, ready to be processed. So if you have the same data process, the problem is, you is if you have all the data processed, which is done in the fetch, script, uh, fetch data script. But the, if you want to start using our interface in BuildStat, uh, you could just by, by, by taking this, this Perl module and CGA, and just modifying w where it's looking for the data. Yeah, I know. Um, but uh, it, it, it just, um, uh, there, there is work to do. I'm, I'm agree, but um, it, I, I think the best is we speak uh, to g together with the uh, source yeah. code, and uh, I will be able to show you what I think need to be changed. But uh, thanks to the hash table and, and things like that, I think it's very um, not uh, a big issue to uh, to plug uh, both uh, systems. Mm -hmm. Or not. Uh, we'll stop to speak about this topic because. Uh yeah. <laughs> um, Hawking um, uh, has been working on darks, and Ryan was working on abstracting the repository, the specific repository. Uh, because we also want to support Git and whatever. We have one fan there, <laughs> a fanboy. <laughs> um, isn't there? Uh, I haven't checked, but uh, I would actually be surprised if there isn't a uh, Perl module on CPAN that does the abstraction. I mean, we use it in PET. As for inbuilt stuff, is it in, in Perl? Yeah. Um, needs abstraction, and there's um, depth change. And a depth commit in DevScript, which also has a complete list of abstractions for doing a little bit of other, but still doing VTS stuff. So uh, it's the wheel is reinvented all over the place. Stop. But 
we want to be able to track changes. So in the subversion variant, this means post commit hooks, which update, which uh, then um, they trigger an update of the cache, which then fetches the changes from the subversion repository. So it's more more like r reading the correct changes. That hasn't happened for a long time. Um, I, I know, but still, if there's a project that's already abstracting lots of the stuff, I mean, some overlap there is, um, like diff, I think. No, maybe, maybe not. Yeah, but that, that's, when that's then something to, to, to investigate. Would be good to just join forces in this project and mm -hmm. and add what uh, we need and use, use it. it. Yeah. A few the first step is uh, to separate from the current code. Maybe the, the abstraction later is not that hard. But the problem is separating the current code nowadays. That's true. <laughs> um. Oh, dip commit, what else? Uh, they are on Perl. I recently did Dux support for dev change, so. You, you're a great fan of Dux? Uh, well, we use Dux in Haskell Group, so I have to add it to all the tools. Um, yeah, I'm still a bit confused about where are we going to store our, <laughs> our data now. There was no, no decision. We were just talking about different possibilities and of course, the, the, the conflicting uh, views of Gornery and Lucas <laughs> about storing in one database or the other. I, and think there is a I think we are agree about that. Uh, uh, far, far I remember it was um, the, the conclusion we, we got um, uh, when we had a phone discussion in uh, September, maybe. Uh, and I think you said um, some things like, uh, okay, uh, UDD must uh, stay s simple to uh, to access and to und be easy to understand for people. And um, where, whereas, uh, in my opinion, uh, build stat must be more complex and uh, for uh, and uh, target for development and uh, and uh, that all. I, I think it's two different databases. And uh, and uh, on feeding uh, UDD from uh, Billstat is uh, something trivial because we have the database uh, and you have just to do a script to synchronize information. Um, well, I think we have to discuss it longer, not yeah, in, sure. in a small buff. <laughs> so <laughs> if the problem is, well, if, if you want to add a lot of data to UDD uh, just for pets and uh, which won't be useful for someone else, then it's a problem. If the data is going to be useful to everybody anyway and it's generic enough to be useful to everybody, then yeah, it, it's fine, perfectly fine to use UDD for that. For example, if you um, have a, a per commit script, uh, where you just need to pass the change log and the control file, for example, and that you can call uh, to um, a script that you would call uh, to say to UDD import that change that new change log and that new control file, uh, and then there's a script processing uh, the data and putting it to UDD. If only if the only information you need is contain those two files, then it's probably fine to do that in UDD. No, I don't, I'm not sure of what you want exactly uh, in... Well, nowadays, what we do is store more or less that. Uh, the biggest problem is watch files, because each time yeah. a watch file changes, we have to refetch mm. the information also. So, with 
update the information about repository, but also update the information about watch files, because we need that information now, not waiting for the next crunch of. Mm. Because we, are, we want to know now if there is one, a new version of this one error in the watch file or whatever. Mm. Um, that's why I also th I'm also not sure about a, a big centralized database like UDD, uh, but maybe UDD can, can, pro can, can, can use our information for somebody else, even if we don't use as our database. Um, and actually, watch files. Sorry? So that's the, the, the second and the, the secondary issue. If we can provide some information that someone else might use, that's, that's nice and everything. But I think what we have to figure out how is how we can have the information that we mm -hmm. want to use. Well, for for me, is uh, I, I, as I said before, uh, my I prefer things that are local, that are more contained, and especially without daemons, depending on daemons, with this for this kind of tool. But it's my it's my point of view only. We also have to discuss things like um, if we are gonna do it, how to do it, the multi-repository stuff, which is quite complex. If we want to support arch uh, uh, archive-wide pet. For example, I would really like to have a pet for the whole archive. Mm, yes, probably, or not. But I think that we need to be careful about not duplicating uh, tools that already exist. For example, for watch files, there's DHS, which is reasonably well maintained. It's not useful at all because the watch file from, uh, that they use is the from the archive. Yeah, I will talk. We okay. will need the, the watch file. I know, from the I know, SPM. I know, I know. I will talk to Rafael about that because maybe he could just provide a way to for you to provide the watch file from SVN. So, like a uh, special PHP page where you would, would post the watch file, and that it would use in addition to the watch file from Unstable and Experimental to to scan for new versions. Watch file is f checking a watch file is just a, a ten li line uh, script. Yeah, but, but then you would you do it for the whole archive because the main problem I have, uh, the main problem I have with PET and SVN BuildStat is that they sort of uh, provide a service to a restricted part of Debian instead of providing it to instead of thinking more globally to, uh, to provide. I, I did to this. Uh, uh, I tried to to do some things uh, more global. Uh, actually, I, I, I stopped because uh, of a lack of time. But um, I, I think uh, what I did is um, and is um, can be used to uh, to provide a global um, view of uh, of the information. Uh, but th th it's bad. Uh, it's too bad because I, I should have bring with me some of some uh, database schema or thing like that uh, to present um, more in detail uh, what BuildStat is. Uh. Um, I'm thinking about the thing about having watch files from VCS on um, DEHS. Maybe it's, I don't think it's, it'll be the easiest way to wait for PET to provide an export and then use the export. And But since DEHS already has the access to the package um, description and then that can fetch the VCS header and just fetch it itself. So this might be a solution where DEHS can get the information but can do it. Not always, but in most cases. If the repository changes, but then, cool. then you need to find a way. To s still need to find a way to ping DHS when the uh, watch file is updated in SVN. But yeah, that's true. I think that Rafael planned to work on that some time ago, but I it's not done currently. But uh, I really think that we shouldn't uh, try to duplicate uh, processes on uh, generating data. I mean, in UDD, from the start, we decided that we try hard not to generate data locally on when importing it into UDD. And we only do that for the Ubuntu bugs because there's no other way to do it. Mm -hmm. I, agree, um, I agree on that. Um, even there is some, but the, problem, the biggest problem that we have is that uh, PET, as SVM will start, are one of the few tools that are targeted at the repository level and not at the archive. DH, DEHS 
UDD and many other tools, the PTS, um, work with archive. So it's quite different. You have to think about different things and you have different time constraints. And uh, the, 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 the information needs to be really fresh. Uh, there's no reason why the, the global tools shouldn't change to match our way. I mean, if our way is superior, you know, it would be worth DHS having this information as well. Yeah. They, they should change. So because it's, it's, it's too complex for the DEHS to adapt to us. It's already doing it for unstable and experimental separately. So it's a new matter of adding four columns in, in the database and uh, writing the code to import the data from SVN and run the checks. So the database is ugly, but it's possible. <laughs> so, so does DEHS already use UDD as the base? or? No, no, the data is just... Uh, DHS has its own um, PostgreSQL database on Alios, and data is exported from DHS to UDD. What about, um, just a bit off topic, but packages.debian.org, will they use UDD eventually, or is it not planned to be used as a base for all these sites that all do the same thing at the moment? I think that the main goal for UDD is to provide new services which make use of the functionality that UDD provides by, combi by combining a lot of data. And uh, if the, the only goal is to re-implement uh, every existing tool, it won't bring anything to Debian. So uh, yes, w uh, when I look at my to-do list for UDD, well, yes, the goal is to be able to replace DDPO or the PTS. But the goal is not to do that. The goal is just to provide the same inform to be able to provide the same information, so that someone like Andreas can can build a tool specific to a team, and uh, have all the, inform the needed information in UDD. Uh, well, uh, we have f little time left. Yeah. 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 On the yeah. You are working. Uh, I'm stuck on the same topic. If not. You are working on a tool uh, to present information. Yeah. What tool is that? Yeah. What happened? They are distracted on UDD. Okay. Well, um, we have ten uh, less than ten minutes, uh, so we should talk about thing also in the short term. What we want to do now. So it's a uh, uh, application. We had this discussion uh, last year and, <laughs> and it's talking there per about the database and all that. Um, we, sh we need to talk more about that. Um, the other things are that would be really cool to have, no, not now, but soon, is to at least have support for Git, Darks, or whatever. And in the not so distant future, to have support for more than one repository at the same time. The thing is, how are we gonna do it? Maybe Ryan from home wants to to contribute. Um, okay, so not really useful for now <laughs> for the discussion. Um, no, <laughs> Well, the, for the for the abstraction is more or less clear. Uh, it was studied when I, the code was written. It's just to separate the calls to SVN to abstract calls like fetch me the last revision, tell me what changed, etc. Fetch me a file. Is it SVN stack abstraction? Sorry. Is it SVN stack? Uh, yes. Yeah, it's, uh, the call is cut. Ah, no, 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 we are using the library. We are using the library. No, we don't spawn the shell ever. There's no system call at all, I think. That will, yeah, <laughs> that will be complex. <laughs> Nested hashes into some objects with accessor methods. 
Because i if you make a typo right now, it goes unnoticed. The thing is, the hashes also are the, the database. Some of them are like objects, but some other are like the database. So we need, we'll need to think about it. It's more a, a mid-term goal, I think. We, for that, uh, we will need to rewrite the whole code, I think, <laughs> probably. Um, from an outsider's perspective, we just had to want to do minor modifications for darks. I actually found it quite pleasant to know that there's um, one big hash with all information that goes this way and then gets output their way. And there's no entanglement of data and code that which you get with objects. I think for simple tasks, batch processing, which are basically doing, like input, output, it's not a bad design decision to have um, a clear uh, data-only structure. So I don't know if it's... But of course, it's, it's whoever broke into it, so I, that's a suggestion. An object with accessories is just a data structure, like anything else. But you get. I also think that he's writing that it's just that data. It doesn't have any intelligence in the data, like in an object. I would think that something like the schema will be more appropriate for what we need. The reason I am struggling for object is not to put some logic into this and some clever stuff, but more to get uh, a runtime syntax check. Well, we won't have that ever in parallel. <laughs> yes, we have it. For objects? No. Yes, for methods? No. Oh. For access? Yes! Uh, you have syntax check, but it doesn't check if the method exists. Yes, at runtime. At runtime? Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Ah, okay, runtime. Well, Sorry. at least at runtime. I thought you were saying with, with hashes, you, you don't have this. Uh, no, right. Never. We don't even have that. <laughs> right. Yeah. I think. So, so that, that's, that's my goal. No? Not some clever stuff to do with mm. uh, objects, multiple inheritance, or whatever. Yeah. We, we may reach to that state someday in a couple of decades, but. <laughs> um, no, I, I think that it's a good thing to do at some point to call it what you want, but to make the structure more clear and, and solid, not only rely on a hash. Um, yeah, but the thing is that it's too easy to make mistakes. And for uh, it happened to me a lot. What was the name of this hash? I said documented. That was a hit for me, I guess. And what does UN underline blah blah underline something mean? <laughs> um, but the other thing I would like to, to, to think about if we want, if we can, is to how to, to go on the multi repo. The, the not the, not the, the, the thing that Ryan working on, but the thing about supporting more than one repository now. In, uh, at the same time. That's something that is bigger in the change, but I think it's more, uh, a lot useful for a lot of people to have a more than one repository, for example, for them or for people that use Git. With many repositories, we cannot be seen as one. We have been asked about Git several times already, so there is demand for that, even if Debian Pro Group doesn't confirm to Git, mm -hmm. which may not have uh, ever happen. Yeah. But it's not only the supporting Git commands, but also supporting many Git repositories. Mm -hmm. That's uh, the biggest problem. Mm -hmm. For that, am I, sorry? Um, it's not a problem to support many equal sized, equally repositories. I mean, Docs is one repository per package. And, and it you're doing that now? Yeah, it doesn't matter because you, always, you only access um, either directories or files and then you just need to make sure you access the right directory, uh, the right repository for the file. You never do any, any operation that actually acts on several packages at once, at the moment. Listing so packages, for example. Well, that's just listing repositories. It's just a file directly list in the file. So having um, lots of repositories of the same kind at the moment, it's already working, basically. But the hard part is to have 
um, different repositories with different settings, like a Git and a Dux repository, or Dux repositories with different layouts. So I think that, uh, I was always under the assumption that that's what you mean with multi-repository. Mm -hmm. Well, there is the thing that about supporting different things one at a time, and there's the other thing that is supporting any, any repositories of any kind yep. at a time. Um, su supporting that's several repositories of the same kind of set is no problem. Um, as for Dux, I already did it. Yeah, we should cut. Well, we didn't wrap up. Well, we can write a mail on the list and continue the discussion. Yeah, I'll read some minutes or something. It's quite um, chaotic at the moment. But anyway, and hopefully we can move from the current hmm, state, which is not very good. Thanks everybody for attending. Your comments were very useful. <laughs>